Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at CPA questions that deal with auditing, specifically the audit assertions. This is an important topic on the CPA exam as well as any auditing course. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as tutorial lessons. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources. For example, I have a, an auditing course as well as many resources to pass your CPA exam. I strongly suggest you check out my website if you're interested in adding 10 to 15 points on your CPA exam or if you want to supplement your accounting courses. So let's take a look at this first question. Which of the following is, is an assertion under the category of classes of transaction? We have assertions that deals with transactions and we have assertions that deal with account balances. So you have to know which is which and you have to know the meaning of them because they're very helpful. And once you understand them, you're going to have a powerful tool to pass your CPA exam. So is it one, two, three? Is it one and two? All of them. So specifically, we are dealing with classes of transaction. The first one is the cutoff. Do you know what a cutoff is? Well, the cutoff deals with the timing. Did we record the transaction or the event in the proper accounting period? So this is what cutoff is. So th did we push revenue, for example, from year one to year two? So this is year one and this is year two. So when we are concerned with cutoff, we are concerned, did we push some revenue from year one to year two, or did we push some revenue from year two to year one, basically shifting revenues or shifting expenses? Well, the cutoff deals with both understatement and overstatement. Would that deal with transactions? And the answer is yes, you could shift revenues and expenses. Those are transactions that, that affect income, such as uh, net profit, revenues, and expenses. So yes, are they are they classes of transaction category assertion? And the answer is yes, definitely one is in, so we can eliminate A and we can eliminate the others. Completeness. What is completeness? Completeness means that all transactions, I just said the word, and events has been recorded. So here you are dealing with understatement. So did you record everything? You didn't keep anything out. You did not keep any expense out. You did not keep any revenue out. Well, this is completeness. So completeness is an assertion that deal with transaction. Therefore, two is in. Therefore, now we have one and two, and once you get to this point, you know the answer is should, must be one, two, and three because one and two are are in letter letter D. But let's look at occurrence. What is occurrence? And it's important that you understand the transaction. Occurrence means that the transaction or the event that actually occur and it belongs to the company. Here you are dealing with usually with overstatement. Because what happened is companies try to book revenues. Something happened. A transaction that occurred, a transaction that happened, but it, not, it, it did not really happen. Usually you don't book expenses, but even if you book expenses and if it did not occur, you, you are dealing with overstatement. So overstatement of revenue also is a presumption in any audit. So that's why we, I said revenue. So definitely occurrence deal with the classes of transaction. Therefore, the answer is D. The answer is D. So those are assertions that deal with classes of transaction. Now, also, we have assertions that deal with account balances. Which of the following is a financial statement assertion regarding account balances? So now we are dealing with account balances. Again, it's important that you understand them. Okay, is it one, two, and three? So let's take a look at each one separately. The first one is rights and obligation. What is rights and obligation? When the company presents their financial statements, they're implying that the assets that they hold is their assets, they have the right to the assets, and the obligation, the liabilities that they are showing is their liabilities. Is this an assertion that deals with account balances? Yes, we're dealing with assets and liabilities. Therefore, one is in. If one is in, we can eliminate C and D. Now, valuation. What is valuation? Valuation is basically, when you think of valuation, think of a dollar amount. Um, it's the assertion that the uh, the that the that that we are properly valuing 
our assets as well as our liabilities, basically putting the right dollar amount. For example, when we're dealing with account receivable, it's reported at net realizable value. When we're dealing with inventory, it's reported at LCM. When we're dealing with property, plant, and equipment, it's reported at proper at, at historical cost unless it's impaired. So valuation deals with balances, account balances. So yes, two is in. Now all we have to find out is three is an option, is also uh, is an assertion that deals with account balances. What is existence? Think of the word existence. Do something exist? Do something exist? Well, existence means you're claiming you have an asset. I want to see if it exists. I want to inspect it. I want to see it. So I'm inspecting oftentimes it's physically inspecting the asset sometimes you have intangible assets you just have to kind of figure out uh, how to make sure that they exist but the point is if it's a physical asset think about existence as an assertion that deals with account balances and the answer is yes and usually not usually existence deals with overstatement if it doesn't exist and you're reporting it then it's an issue so the 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 answer is uh, which of the financial statement assertion regarding account balances they all three deals with account balances account balances so the answer is the answer is b okay so it's very important that we understand the difference between the classes of transaction and the account balances and on my on my website i do have a um, few lessons about this topic very important topic for the cpa exam account receivable effect one or more assertions which of the following assertion relate to account receivable net of allowance for doubtful account, which is mean net receivable, um, existence or valuation. So we have to know the difference between existence and valuation. Existence for the account balances means do the do the account uh, do the account receivable actually exist? And here we are looking at gross gross balance. And the question is not about the gross amount because remember account receivable minus the allowance equal to net receivable so when we are dealing with existence we are dealing with account receivable but the question is about this number not account receivable the questions that we are being asked is net receivable account receivable net of the net of the uh, net of the allowance so once one is out so a is out c is out now all we have to find out is two which is valuation uh, deals with the account receivable net of the allowance and remember what did we say valuation valuation deal deals with the dollar amount here we are asking is account receivable properly valued at net realizable value is this a valuation assertion and the answer is yes now how do you how do you make sure it's properly valued you check their credit policies you check to see how they estimated allowance so on and so forth so yes valuation is an assertion that deals with the account receivable net of the allowance therefore the answer is b let's take a look at this question inventory that was bought right before year end uh, the end of year one but was incorrectly recorded in year two so simply put this is year one and this is year two so it was recorded uh, sorry it was purchased here but was not recorded until year two Okay, which assertion is affected in year one? So they're asking us which assertion is affected in year one. Well, what happened in year one? In year one, we had a transaction here. We purchased inventory, but it was not recorded. So did we have all the transactions recorded? And the answer is no, we did not have it recorded. Therefore, completeness is definitely one of them because we did not record all the transaction. It means our inventory and accounts payable if we bought it on on account is under is understated because they're not complete therefore one is definitely so two only is out uh, and D is out so all we have to find out now if the second assertion existence apply to year one well which assertion is affected is existence affected no existence is not affected we didn't even claim that we have it existence is basically is tested when you have an asset they're telling you in the f in the in the first statement that we did not even record it therefore we don't worry about existence existence will be a concern in year two basically you are recording something but it doesn't belong to year two but they're asking us about year one so if they're asking us about year two existence will be the right answer for year two because you are recording something in year two that should not have existed in year two it should have been part of year one so the answer for this is only 
one is only. Let's take a look at this question. Recalculation of invoice amount and inspection of certain document for authorization or audit procedure to test which of the following assertions. Here what we're doing is basically looking at the numbers, you know, footing and cross footing, taking the units times the selling price, um, just to make to make sure the math is correct. So when we do so, what are we what are which 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 assertion are we are we testing? Are we testing the cutoff or are we testing the valuation? Remember, what is the cutoff? The cutoff is is it in the proper is the is the amount is the is the transaction in the proper period? Is this what we are doing here? No. All, all what we're doing is the math computation. And remember, when we said uh, valuation, we said we're looking at the dollar amount. You're checking the math. So the answer is valuation, not cutoff. Therefore, the answer will be B here. Because the cutoff deals with is it in the proper period. Now, when we'll do when we are doing so, we can look at the dates and you know look at the record, but th that's not what they're doing here. What they're saying is when we do the uh, when we do the inspection of certain document, re recalculation deals with valuation. That's what you're doing. You are recomputing and making sure the transaction is properly authorized, but not the cutoff transaction. These topics are covered, again, in my auditing course and in, in my assertions. You could visit the website. I strongly suggest you do so to have more, uh, to, to gain a better understanding of a very important topic that's covered on the CPA exam. As always, study hard, good luck, and stay safe during those coronavirus days.